Hello, my name is uh, Philip Nastasi, and I'm one of the local residents in this area. And um, I'm one of the families that have to live through this parking nightmare in my neighborhood. And one of the questions that uh, I've asked some of the students of why they do that is they tell me that the parking fees at CSUN are cost prohibitive for them. Why is that the case? And why can't they park on their own campus when they're going to class? Anywhere you want. All right. Colin, do you? I, I get that... the pleasure of taking that one, I think. Yeah, please. Uh, Diane's so, busy, so would you? <laughs> obviously, we've had a lot of discussions over the years about that. But just the, the basics on parking at CSUN, this, the state doesn't support our parking program. So many of you know we have probably parked in some of our parking structures we've built over the last 15 years. All of that debt is paid through the parking program. So it's, a, it's about a $9 million annual program that we have to fund. We're no different than any other CSU. And actually, if you look at the larger CSUs, our rates average out right now to about uh, roughly $40 a month if you break it down that way. Most students pay by the semester. We do everything we can to retain those. Frankly, we haven't raised those fees in a number of years. And it's a very difficult issue for us. Right now, we actually just put out a question uh, to our campus community several weeks back about all these issues with transit and parking. And we're trying to balance. We want more transit. We also probably need to look at, I think our neighbors would say, a little bit more parking supply in the key areas of campus. All those things have to come into the cost equation because one of the, one of the strange things I'll share with you is our transportation programs are funded out of our parking fees, which means the more successful we are, we sort of feed on our revenue source. So it's, it's actually, I tell people here on campus, uh, strangely enough, it's probably the, the most interesting economic model we have, parking, because there's a lot of supply and demand issues. But I guess the short answer to the question is we're doing everything we can to keep the costs as affordable as possible and balance the services there. Um, and it's something that, that we have been in dialogue with the community about, and we just have to make it as convenient as possible so it's attractive. And frankly, we're here tonight to talk about getting more students to really be able not only to come to CSUN uh, without using a single occupancy vehicle, which uh, I'll say this, of the, of the commuting students to CSUN, 80% of them are in a single occupancy vehicle. We need to solve that, but also we're building yes, more yes. housing here on campus. Right? We've added 800 beds in the last few years. We have 3,200 beds. A lot of development around the campus. That all helps with the issue of traffic and parking, but it has to go hand in hand with investment in real transit so that you can come live here and not have to have a car. All right. Max. Where are my mics? Next. Max. Good evening. Corinne Ho, Canoga Park Neighborhood Council. This is a question coming from- From Madagascar. <laughs> from Madagascar, yes. This is a question from a stakeholder. The question is, how effective is the honor tap, the, the honor tap system? Thank you. Honor tap system. Well, actually, it's a good question. I'll let Stephanie get into it. I was one of the people who actually opposed putting gates on, on Metro because I think the honor system actually is much more successful than people think it is. But Metro has put gates on all of the red line on all the subway entrances now have, have gates that you have to show, have, you have to tap your ticket or tap your card in order to get in. So get we'll get some better data shortly, but you know, the vast majority of our riders pay. Um, they, a lot of them have monthly passes, so you don't necessarily see them buying tickets, but a lot of them have monthly passes, the vast majority of stuff is that. Yeah, you, you got it right, Richard. Um, but what we also continue to do is look for ways to leverage technology to ensure that uh, that population of our ridership who doesn't want to pay, we can actually um, leverage law enforcement to make sure that they do pay. And in fact, um, we are deploying now this infrared technology video analytics where the technology can actually um, determine whether someone's actually going through the gates and not paying a fare. So we're constantly recognizing that we do have this honor system and we want to make sure as many people pay the proper fare as entitled to. Hi everybody, my name is Mark Siegel. I'm president of the Sunland Tahunga Neighborhood Council. I polled my constituency and I would say uh, the biggest questions they have for you for this planning type of a meeting is they want buses that run more than every 90 minutes in our community. We're kind of the stepchild community of Los Angeles. And um, 
um, we'll, Mission College is, will be coming up to our area and having a satellite. And so we're looking to add buses for that particular route um, from other areas to the mission. What and the it, last thing that they that asked for is, to open? I, I don't know okay. yet. We'll try it because that's something and we can check on. So. You can ask the president of Mission College and he'll, he should be able to tell you. But because uh, you guys are buddies, right? Um, and the last thing um, is to connect us from our small community to Burbank, Pasadena, uh, North Hollywood, and Northridge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Barry? Who do I got, Barry or Max? Max. Max. Hi, uh, my, my name is Mike Kaiser. I'm an employee here at CSUN, and I'm a monthly pass holder for the Metrolink. And my wife and I also, we're, we're a single car occupancy household, and we would normally, my wife teaches here in the Pasadena City College. Today is a perfect example of what the, the, where the problem exists. Specifically, I had to drive here. I couldn't ride my bike and take the train because there's no train to go home tonight. Furthermore, I had to spend an hour today at lunchtime driving my wife over to the North Hollywood Station to drop her off so she, she could take two trains over to Pasadena. I'm gonna go pick her up right now. My point is that there's people, there's a train system that runs right up to this school and why aren't people taking it? With the monthly pass holder, you can not only ride, you ride for free on the weekends, so we go on vacations, and this extends into the light rail and the bus. So here you have, you're promoting a, a, a much larger uh, remo car reduced carbon footprint by these programs. Thank you, Colin Donahue, for your efforts to speak to the Metro League, and please give the rest of the CSUN a reduced rate on these monthly passes. We're enjoying the benefits. I don't know why anybody else isn't. And so get more trains out here. Get more Thank trains. Thank you. Okay. Right oh. Here. Yep, Barry. Oh. Hi. I have a question about the orange line. You've talked about. I'm sorry. Can I, let me just interrupt for one second before I ask a question. If people, if, if, particularly if you're leaving, there's a questionnaire if you, if you find it at the back table that has to do with the future of the Northeast San Fernando Valley, and it's an online survey. So I'd encourage everyone to take a look at it and to pick up this flyer and participate in that survey when you get a chance. I'm sorry, my apologies. That's okay. Um, talking about you know putting bridges or tunnels at the intersections, but you were also talking about uh, getting longer buses. When would that happen? Is that something that's actually planned? Thanks to the legislation that was just passed by uh, some of the members of Nazarian, we were actually studying when we could actually um, procure those buses and get them in service. It would fit nicely with the grade separations once the grade separations are done so that those buses are not mixing with traffic. Uh, that would be, I mean, that's an ideal sort of timing to look at doing both those at the same time. It's a couple of years, it's a couple of years. I'm sorry? Well, I mean, they run, one of the things that it would allow us to do with grade steps is run what they call tighter headways, less time in between buses, so you can put longer buses on that run more frequently without the intersection slowing them down. So that would be the fastest way to get relief on the orange line. Max? Um, hi, my name is Dominic Ortiz. Uh, I'm a CSUN student, and I, I travel to campus by metro every day. Um, I was wondering what might be done to the transit center because if you've ever taken the 744, you know that there's only like two benches there and at some, sometimes there's up to 20 or 30 students just standing around while you know, other students are passing by walking to their cars. So I'm just curious about that. Thanks, Dominic. And, and um, so you know the transit center very well. And if you think about it, the south side of the transit center has four large bus bays in it. If you look at the north side, it sets back pretty far from the parking structure, and so that by design, we could at least double the capacity of that transit center. So in working with Stephanie and her staff, we have a lot of ability to easily, when we talk about shovel-ready projects, get right on that if we can fund some things. The other things that we're talking about are immediately getting out with some, some campaigns. Stephanie mentioned earlier the, um, the, uh, you, you, where the tracking of the buses, when the buses are coming the next bus program, they're looking at doing that. So uh, we're looking at these kind of things for fall. We're also looking at marketing together. You know, we mentioned earlier this U-Pass program to make sure 
We found out that a lot of our students, because of the difficulty in getting the tap cards timely, they're paying the full fee. They're paying $100 and only getting a $10 subsidy from campus. What we want you to get is uh, the, the full Metro discount, which I think is down to $57 discount, right? Plus the CSUN discount. Um, now it's getting very, very affordable to students. So we want to get that message out. So kiosks, information, all those things we're looking at. And so you're going to see a lot of that coming for, for okay. fall. I'm going to take two more questions because um, we're being told by the university also that it's, it's oh, okay. we've overstayed our welcome. By the way, the buses are all leaving. <clears throat> the buses are going soon. But can we get a big thank you to, to not just President Harrison and, and, to, and to George, but to everyone at Cal State Northridge and the people who put the facility together and served us a great meal. I'm going to come back here for everything. I mean, you guys do such a fantastic job, Diane. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a comment. I'm a parent of a student here at Cal State Northridge. My son's a senior here in Poli Sci and graduates this year. Uh, my son is typical for a lot of the students here. He works, he's here full time. He has a full time job, or almost full time job on the other side of the valley. He's got an internship out of the city of Santa Monica. He is always on the road. And I got to tell you, mom and I worry about him. He's on the road from 6 o'clock in the morning until sometimes 10 30, 11, 11 30 at night. I appreciate the fact that we're looking at congestion, we're looking at environmental issues, but I think we're forgetting that we've got 50,000 young people or 28,000 or 35,000 young people that are on the road. They're under a great deal of stress. They're driving to and fro in all sorts of conditions, many times in cars that really aren't up to speed because of their college and students. Can, can we consider that, that there's, there's lives at stake here? No. It's not just congestion. It's not just environmental issues. There are lives of sure. our children no, at stake right. as well. No, you're right. I mean, part of I mean, look, part of what one of the reasons to great separate, uh, you know, the light rail is to make it safer as well. So, you know, I, I know at Metro at MetroLink, safety is foundational, and everything we do comes after we make it as safe as possible. I, I guess really what I was saying is safer. If, frankly, it's safer on the bus. We'd like to get them on the bus and off the sure. streets if we can. I so understand. I agree with you. All right, last question. Right Who have I got? Oh, you're over there. Okay, sorry. Max? Hi, my name is Sam Potts. Um, I'm a civil engineering student here at CSUN. Um, I actually just came from my internship at work, and I work downtown, and the fastest way for me to get here without a car was taking the Metrolink, so actually because I know I'm going to be coming here a lot after work um, for this month, I got a monthly pass, and I do ask that you read how much this student pass is from Metrolink. Oh, no, no, I'm letting you read it, so I'm not making a number. One ninety nine and fifty cents. So it cost me two hundred dollars for one month to go between Northridge and Union Station, and um, currently CSUN does offer the ten dollars subsidy for Metro users. So it, getting a 40, already reduced forty three dollars student pass for Metro gets down to thirty three thanks to AS, but nothing's done currently. For um, for MetroLink, and remember, this is two hundred dollars with this as a student pass. I understand, um, Colin. Is that possible to wrap that into the program somehow? Yeah. So so I'll say it, that is a difficult one because MetroLink is a much more expensive program, and we deal with that in our uh, commuter subsidies on the staff side. Um, I can tell you that MetroLink is part of the partnership that we have with Metro. We're talking to MetroLink also, so we're looking at a lot of different things we can do with them. We'll, we'll be looking at the subsidies and the costs as well as, you know, the last mile rides. We're even looking at Uber, Lyft, those kinds of programs that they have coming out. So they're in the dialogue. That's what I can tell you, and we're going to be working on it. Listen, I want to thank everybody. I know we didn't answer every question. All of us will be hanging around for a little bit. So bring it down again. President Harrison, thank you very much. Thank all of you for participating. Come up and sign our transportation future, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Bob, thank you very much, Senator Hertzberg.